All right. So this time we've got our sleeves rolled up. We're ready to get our hands dirty and play with some dough. So first I'm just going to briefly show you my formula here. Let's actually uh, going to have to go ahead and flip that around. Okay, well anyhow, I transcribed my dough formula, including what I needed in my sourdough, what I needed in my final dough, as well as the bassinage. And if you'll remember, that's the uh, second addition of water and salt that some bakers use. Um, so this is my starter. I mixed it at 7.45 last night, so it's had a solid um, 16, 16 hours at this point. Um, and as you can see, I didn't choose a large enough container, so it's kind of collapsed. Um, if I smell it, it's got a very gentle acidic aroma. I use white flour for my sourdough bill, whereas I use the whole wheat flour to just maintain my starter because I didn't want quite as much acidity in the starter. Whole grain flours can always build more acidity because the wheat bran has components that can actually buffer the acid and allow the organisms to produce more acid before the acid begins to inhibit them. So that's how choice of flour in your sourdough build can impact the final result. So anyways, here's my starter. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this all out. And you'll also notice that I've scaled out my salt and my flowers. So I've got everything ready. I've got my mise en place. Um, so I'm gonna take my, take my starter and I'm gonna go ahead and scrape it all out into a larger container. You can see it's pretty sticky. Starters tend to get sticky as they get older, as the gluten begins to break down under the acid. Those of you who have taken biochemistry will know that salt concentration and acidity, pH, have a huge impact on the structure of proteins, and that is very much the case for gluten. As sourdough begins fermenting, the a little bit of acid actually really helps the gluten develop kind of on its own. But once you get to a certain point, the acid begins to start breaking the gluten down. That is so sticky. Usually I would have made this starter at 50% hydration, but last night, for whatever reason, I accidentally did 60%, and it's definitely harder to work with this morning. Oh my god, it's so sticky. Woo! All right, and this right here is just a, it's essentially like a little short spatula you can hold in your hand. It's called a, um, a dough scraper. It's different from the metal bench knife. This one is not, not strictly required the way the bench knife is, but it's nice to have. Okay, so once I get my starter out, I'm going to scale the amount of water that I need. But before I do that, if you'll recall, one of the goals of mixing is to bring the dough to the correct temperature that it's going to have going into bulk fermentation. So in a commercial bakery, you're going to lose me for a few seconds. In a commercial bakery, the dough mixers actually generate a lot of heat through the friction between the mixer on and the dough. All of the home baking mixing methods are much gentler than that and don't produce heat. So it's even more important to get the temperature right strictly on the basis of the water. The water is the one ingredient whose temperature you can control. Because the flour is just going to be at whatever room temperature you store it at. And then, of course, the salt is such a negligible quantity and is the same situation as the flour. So it really comes down to the water. And it takes a little bit of practice to know how warm your water is going to be at the final dough temperature. 
But with a bigger batch like this, this is gonna make four 850 gram loaves. So it's about eight, eight pounds of dough. It's even more important to get the temperature right because if you don't, that's a huge thermal mass and trying to change its temperature is gonna be pretty much impossible. So I'm gonna start out by taking the temperature of my flour here. My desired dough temperature is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, about 20, 27, 28 Celsius. I like it on the warmer side because I prefer the flavor when you get a nice, active, warm fermentation. So my flour is at about 68, so cool room temperature. Um, after 15 minutes of mixing, because the room is cool, it's going to cool off a little bit. Like I said, this is a little bit like you just kind of have to figure out what works for you because the published formulas that they use in bakeries are assuming a machine mixer, uh, which heats the dough by a certain amount per minute. Um, so it's, I can't really offer too much advice. It's something that you kind of have to just see what works for you. But anyways, it's 68 here and me shooting for about 80. I'm probably gonna need water that's close, close to 90 degrees. Now let me take the temperature of my starter too. I kept it at about 80, but it's probably cooled down somewhat since then because I took it out of the uh, temperature box that I have, which, by the way, is not necessary at all. If you have an oven with a pilot light, it's kind of a classic. Um, a warm spot in your room, like above the heater, just whatever works. Um, between Again, between 68 and 85 is a pretty big range. I like to keep mine on the warmer side, and because I have the luxury of controlling the temperature a little more precisely, I do. But if you don't, you can still get a good and consistent result. Okay, my starter is around 73. So yeah, I'm going to shoot for pretty warm water. Again, because this is kind of my chance to get the temperature right. So I'm going to be adding 1,147 grams of water. Um, so about 1150. All right, so I've got my thermometer. Remember, I'm shooting for about 90 degrees water so that I can end up with about 80 degrees in the final dough, hopefully. Okay, yeah, we are, we're actually, we're close to 100. So I'm gonna add a little more cold water, go for 95, and see what happens. Cause again, I'm still kind of trying to figure out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're at, we're at around 95 now. All right, so 1150. Whoops, I got to my skin in. I want it to work. Well, I guess we'll move back here. Shout out to the wonderful and amazing Shasta Scholes for being on camera. If you want to, yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so 11:50. So I'm gonna pour it into my starter because the starter is pretty stiff, and to get the starter homogeneously mixed in with the dough, I like to kind of dissolve it in the water first. It just makes it easier. So let's see. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fifty. All right. Doesn't need to be super on the nose with the water. I can always, when I do the bassinage step, where I add some of the water I withheld from the total formula, I can always adjust to what the dough is. Okay, so dissolving the starter, I can feel it, it's very sticky. Alright, 
right, so once my starter's kind of dissolved in the water, my next step is going to be to mix it with the flour. Just enough to sort of homogenize it and make sure there's no little dry lumps of flour left. So I'm going to go ahead and pour it in. You can see the chunks of starter that have kind of broken up a little bit. They'll go into the dough easier than if I hadn't done that. Okay, so I like doughs that are a little bit softer, um, and in other words, a little bit higher hydration, a little more water. It can be a bit of a pain to handle if you're not used to. So one thing I always like to have handy is just a little bit of a water binding, because this really helps prevent the dough from sticking in if, um, if it's tempted to start sticking. So I'll just wipe my hand. So again, now I'm in a mix the flour with the sort of water starter mix. I, uh, I like to use a nice circular motion around the bowl. Sometimes I'll spin the bowl. I'll use a little kind of pinching motion sometimes. But at the beginning, it tends to be, it tends to be pretty straightforward to just incorporate the flour. Sometimes make sure that you're getting the stuff along the edges if you have a container with rounded uh, edges like this one. Or make be extra careful about the bottom if you're using a bowl. And I like to start out with about 70, 72% hydration when I'm starting my mix. I'll add whatever water I want later in the bassinage but it helps if it's wet enough to easily mix, but not so wet that it just falls out of your hand whenever you're trying to work with it. All right, so we're ready for the fun part. So we've just gotten our flour and water incorporated. It's kind of this really, really tacky loose dough. Sticks like hell. And the next step is gonna to be to develop some glue. And so, the mixing method that I use is called slap and fold. It's from a French baker who works in Britain, Richard Bertinet, and it's kind of designed to mimic the action of a mechanical mixer that you might find in a bakery. It develops some gluten, and importantly, it incorporates air. And air incorporation during mixing provides the nucleation sites, which is kind of like if you've ever had a meteorolo or a geology class about um, clouds. That's how clouds form. So it's like you have a little bubble of air that comes from the air you incorporate during mixing. And then when the microorganisms produce gases through their fermentation, that will get added into those pre-existing little bubbles of air, those nucleation sites. So this mixing method is designed to incorporate air to provide some of those nucleation sites, as well as to start aligning the glue, to start developing the glue. Okay, so my hands are sticky. I'm gonna just wet them for comfort. It's gonna be real sticky to start out with. You're gonna, you're gonna feel lost. Okay, so I'm gonna empty my dough on the countertop. Again, I can use my dough scraper to kind of uh, help get some of the dough that's stuck in there just to make sure I can develop all of the dough. Okay, scrape the bottom, add it on. All right, so the way this works is you're gonna pick up your dough and you're gonna hit it on your workspace and then you're gonna kind of fold it over itself. Right now it's very sticky, very loose and you're gonna feel like, what the hell is this? I hate this. So as you can see, I'm grabbing it kind of like their handles on either side. Lifting it up, giving it a little stretch, and that traps air inside it. Every time you do one of those folds, some air gets incorporated, and you can hear it even sometimes. Just lift, pick up, hit. Again, the dough at this point, it's very soft. It's very loose, and it feels really like a pain in the ass to work with. 
Try to get a little stretch on the way back. That helps develop the gluten, especially later on. At first, it's still kind of, it's still fully hydrating and it's still very soft and loose. If you feel like, oh my God, this is not working for me. A couple things I see a lot of people try to do when they first start out using this method is they'll either pick up just at the very top of it, in which case you can't really get a good handle on the whole mass of dough. Whereas if you pick it up more in the center, you'll get a more sort of a better grip on it. Another thing I see people do is not stretching. So people will just go like, and then kind of get their hands stuck in it, where if you kind of stretch it and then fold it. And another thing I like to think about when I'm doing the slap and fold is that towards the end of the motion, I'm almost like, I'm almost releasing, releasing the dough or like throwing it over itself. So I go like, Do that for a few more rounds. And you can already feel some difference in it. Whereas at first it was just this tacky, sticky mess. It still is, but now you'll notice that it feels like, at least like it could be convinced to be a single dough mass. Whereas before it was kind of just this like lumpy kind of gross thing. Now it's it's starting to, the, the flour is, be, is fully hydrated now. It is, is more hydrated. So this is where your bench knife is going to come in handy. The first time today we're going to use this quite a bit. Um, but think of this as kind of an extension of your hand. And I like to use this to kind of scrape up the bits of dough that end up sticking to the countertop at first. So I'm scraping it up, getting it under. Kind of helps release it. Again, I can sort of wet my hand or wet the scraper if I if things are sticking too badly. And I try not to. I try to just be very loose with how I touch the dough because again, it's really sticky. So if I'm kind of loose, just come off. Whereas if I like, then it sticks like crazy. Okay, so the mixing process is going to be that interspersed with, so after about 20 or so strokes of the, of the slapping and folding, I like to kind of go through with my hands and kind of scissor through it, scissor through the gluten strands. And you can actually hear the air you incorporated as, as the bubbles get popped as you're doing this. It's kind of fun. And this replicates the arm action of a spiral mixer, which is what you typically see in most artisan bakeries. Okay, so. Yep, it's very lumpy. And you can see it kind of like got torn up a bit. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is put the dough back together using my scraper, kind of fold it over itself, roll it up in the mask one more time, and then we're gonna repeat that. And I usually end up going for around 10 cycles of that. So 20 hits, scissor through, repeat 10 times. But I guess it's not about how many times, it's about what the dough looks and feels like at the end. So I'm gonna just keep doing this. And after this one more set where you can kind of see me in the rhythm of it, we're gonna give it a pause while I finish up and then Towards the end, the final few rounds, you'll get to see some of the changes the dough undergoes as it gets closer to being finished. It's also a really fun thing to do. And it's a good exercise. Alexa, you want to try? Yeah. My friend Alexa really enjoys this, so she's going to 
give it a few shots. Oh wait, I have to wash my hands. <laughs> yeah, hand washing is important. Mm -hmm. We're living together right now, so it's not really uh, <laughs> super critical in my opinion that we do six feet and that only I touch the stove, but all right. This is way bigger. Yep, this is a twice as big as the batch last time. Wait, so I wet my hands? Yeah, I like to start out with a hand wetting, and then you can use the, the bench knife to okay. scoop so it Okay, so this is my second time ever doing this, so we'll see. <laughs> Wait, so I just put it in a pile again and then grab it, right? Mm -hmm. I've never done anything like this before. It's really different at first. Why is this so wet? Well, I used a little bit more water to start out with because it's, in some ways, it's easier to, it's like easier to scissor through when it's a little bit softer. Have you ever made one this big before? Oh, yeah. I made that just double, double that before. You made it this big? Oh yeah. Wait, how do you oh, how do you stick it up? Okay, so let's start with um, I would wet your hands. Alright. It can be a bit tricky at first. You know, so sweet. Wait, this is for Cam and Connor, right? Well, it's for like it's gonna go out. <laughs> it's it's supposed to be his class well. right now. But I'm not prepared. Okay. Okay, alright. <laughs> Yep, so the key is just like confidently pick it up, get under it. There you go. And it'll start oh, to. No. You gotta go quick and just kind of pick it I'm, up. I'm wearing a sweater, Dad. Yeah, I think this is working. Wait, let me take off this. Long no, sleeves are not good. recommended. I rolled mine up. I really should have just put on a t-shirt. Okay, so I'm gonna my little pen real quick. So I'm gonna really wet my hands, and then I'm gonna use the scraper to release the dough and use one hand to kind of keep it from re-adhering to the table, and then I'm gonna pick it up. Can I try again? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Oh, jeez. Wait, what was the thing I said I wanted to do yesterday? Like, taste the salt or something? Oh, taste for salt. <laughs> yeah. Salt will come at the end of the process. Wait, why is mine stickier? Well, it's stickier because it's just a stickier <laughs> dough than last time. I just put more water. Just no, I'm saying when you did it, it was like... Mm, probably because I had wetted my hands really recently. And you have to kind of keep moving quickly because, Whoa. again, if you really stick your hand for a while, it'll start sticking. Okay, I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> it was really good when you were starting. Yeah. Okay, I guess I got great. tired. All right. So... Again, I'm going to pause this and then finish mixing to a stage where it starts to really start changing a lot, and then I will cue it up again.